wanted to first say something real quick. I had recorded this video before, and I wasn't quite sure of the quality of it. Video. These are these are all audio letters, so trying to make any kind of distinction between them is kind of silly. If they had moving flashing lights where people went, ooh, then yeah, I could understand calling it a video. But I just wanted to say this, I've been holding on to this one for about a week now, wondering if I should put it out, but... As history often does to us, China starting to create more and more uh, silos for nuclear weapons makes this video a little more relevant. So here you go. Greetings, citizens from rolling hills of the bluegrass. nihilism the basic understanding is that it's a general belief that nothing is of real importance nothing matters and you, you, you've seen this if you grew up in the 90s such as I did and through the early 2000s you had the uh, new atheist movements that were really really picking up steam and you have um, the, the edgy goth kids, you know, that would hang around. They'd wear, you know, crucifixes and um, pentagrams just to tee off the the straight-laced Christian kids down at the other end of the hall. And, you know, it's, it, it's, you look back on it, it's like, okay, it was kind of funny. They're just, they're trying to be iconoclastic because they want to be edgy and cool within their peer group. But they got... A boost with the new atheist movement because the new atheist atheist movement or as I like to call them satheists scientism attempted to put science on a podium and say that it could answer everything in human life well if you want to go down that direction you just have to turn the clock back to the 1920s 30s and 40s and see how well that got us any ways because right now it's replaying itself just with a different skin tone but we won't get into that so the edgy goth kids they finally had their reason their backers and those backers had wonderful titles with you know um phd and md behind them and they had these people that at least on the surface, rivaled the idea of any kind of religious institution. And they could point at these people and go, see, look, these are what my people believe, and they're awesome. But the problem with the New Atheist Movement, as I've said before, is they came in, and they wrecked everything, but didn't have a plan of what to put in its place. And this is where you get into an issue with the current iteration of Sam Harris, <laughs> who is now some way marketing a weird kind of non-religious new ageism with consciousness and mindfulness. And, and he's just, he's, he's one step away from talking about Maitreya and um, being a channeler and calling in seances and stuff. It's just he would never do that, of course. He would come up with some kind of religious, um, social, science religious jargon that would, of course, make it very plausible because he's a neuroscientist and, you know, and he talks about how there's, there's no free will and there is no the self, so that totally undermines the idea of the individual. Imagine that undermining the idea of the individual that that in itself isn't isn't subversive at all, is it? No, 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 no. But Sam's a. You know, he's a. He's a good man. OK. Smart and good do not equal the same. But these kids eventually roll in. To college. And they have a moment, an experience, where they learn more history. And they learn more history from the teachers that, of course, right now, that 
bugbear of a word, postmodernism, which then helps them justify their world position as it was before, even more. So first they had the science people going, yeah, you know, you know stupid redneck, stupid religious people, yeah. And then they go to history class and they're history professors with the same little letters and doctorate at, doctor before their name. Say, yeah, see, look, these, these are the hideous things that we did. Never talked about the good, really. Or if you do, it then becomes an inverse where then you end up with the Sean Hannity people where the only thing America has ever done is good. It will always be good and there's never ever been anything bad. That's Sean Hannity circa, you know, 2002. Never done anything bad. We're good. Oorah. Hooray. On the other side of the map, postmodernist, you know, deconstructionist type people, you know, no, America has only ever done bad stuff. There's nothing good about America. We need to get rid of it. Okay. So neither of these things are tenable. At all. But if you're a little goth kid, it kind of gives you a reason. Gives you a purpose. Gives you something to evangelize. That impetus to go, ooh, hey, I now have a framework to think within. But at that heart of that framework is nothing matters. None of this is important. So how am I going to be purposeful? I gained purpose, but now none of it matters. None of it matters at all. And this is the nihilism part. And this, this of course, goes to music. I always have to at some point. There's a set of composers, the 1930s. They had seen World War I, too old to participate in World War II. but lived through it, saw the tragedies of it, and just basically went, well, pff, who cares? There was an obsession with death that crept into their minds. Because in the end, this is what happened. God is dead, so nihilism is there. Because none of this matters. It's just biological machines playing out their part in order to create new machines. And the perpetuating cycle continues. None of it matters. And none of it matters on top of that. Because now if something did matter. It could all be blown away. By a nuclear bomb. So the mental constructions don't matter. And then the physical constructions don't matter because they can be destroyed in a millisecond. That's the kind of world that a lot of these philosophers came into. It is the... personification of nihilism. And what do you do with that in order to build a world around you? Not just a society, but your own personal life. How do you form anything? Because anything you do is like, ah, well, it'll just be gone. It'll, it'll evaporate into the nothing. Because unfortunately, there is a very, very, very true point to that. And all you have to do is look to the way people succeed. People who succeed, it's the idea that hard work will get you there. But I have known tons of people who were 
infinitely more talented than me at music. Infinitely more talented. Amazing musicians. And none of you will ever hear of them. Hours and hours in the practice room, working it out, hitting it hard like someone going to the gym. Hours in the practice room. Day after day, and none of you will know them. But you'll know the pop stars on the radio who may work just as hard. So there you go. Nothing matters, and it wouldn't matter anyways because it could be blown up and sent into ash. It's a terrible way to live. It's an absolutely terrible way to live. And I have to be careful of it too because, you know, I end up becoming very cynical at times. I can almost be kind of pithy. And it's and it's just, it's like, well, what does any of this matter? You know, those, those of us in the liberty movement, we try to be optimistic and everything. But sometimes you just kind of go, well, we're fighting the good fight and nothing's coming of it. We're out there. We're talking to people. I'm talking to you now. People larger than me are talking to you. And nothing's happening. You have pushbacks here and there that get highlighted. But is it enough? It's something, right? But is it enough? And that's when the cynicism creeps in. Oh, well, it's just power politics. It doesn't matter. The nihilism and the nuke. And then I realize now that I'm I'm sitting in here and I'm becoming nihilistic. I'm becoming uh, not, oh, what is me, but oh, who gives a damn. I want to be proven wrong. Please make me wrong. <laughs>